somebody was trying to implement this signature pad JavaScript library in their web app and they couldn't make it to work and I found it kind of interesting. So I'm gonna try to see if I can make this work in our web app. Just a word of caution, I don't know much about this library. So if you decide you want to use this in production, make sure you do some research. Let me just quickly show you what I got out of this by the end of this whole process. So if I open the web app, I basically have this. I have this area where we can actually do some signature. Then we have clear and send buttons. So here you can go and say something like hi and clear, and then it clears it. And basically we can also do, so pretty much just a signature. This is where you would write whatever you would write, right? So the way this is gonna work, if I click send, What's gonna happen if I go to my drive, let me just delete this like this. So if I click on that send, it should just take that signature and put that in here as a PNG file. So hit send, now I'm gonna go back to my drive and it may take a little bit, but there it is, it showed up. Now if I open this, see, there it is. So that's pretty much all we're gonna do here. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so let's get started by setting up a quick web app here. So I'm gonna right click here, more Google Apps Script. As usual, we just give it some sort of name. So there it is. So let's just, uh, set up some clasp project over this so I don't have to deal with this editor. So a new folder in here. Let's just drag that to Visual Studio Code. So I already have clasp installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a log in here really quickly. If you want to learn how to install Clasp and all of that, I have a separate video for that. I'm not gonna go over that here. Let's go get the ID. Actually, before I do that, let me just set up a node project first. So that's our node init dash Y. Oh, you know what? NPM, not node. Here we go, our package.json is here. Now let's go ahead and clone our app script project here. Let's make a folder for this. Then clone our project to this folder. So that's our script. So the root there will be that SRC. And we should have our files here. Good, so the project is set up. We have our files. Let's go ahead and do some HTML in here. And let's make sure our code.js loads a web app out of this index file. Now the autocomplete doesn't work because I didn't install the definitions. Let me go ahead and do that really quickly here. So for those who are not interested in setting up class, you don't have to.
let's just return this. All right, so that's that. Now for our HTML, let's go get some bootstrap really quickly. Now here, instead of h1, let's just do a div and we'll give it an ID app. Now inside of this, let's do another div and we'll do an ID for this too. So now let's go get their library. So I could do this, but I'm just gonna keep this simple. I'll just grab their library here because this is primarily for testing. Let's just load this all the way down here and just do another script down here. Now let's go get their docs. So basically we have the selector and what's this canvas? So I guess that it's supposed to be an HTML canvas tag. So I'll just copy some of this. I don't think I need the rest. So let's just do this on load. So let's set up a function. So that's the document. We need to get this thing. I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna use get element by ID. But I think this has to be a canvas element, not a div. So let's go do that. So now we have that. Now we need to run this function. So we'll do it on the page load. So that's that function over here. We're gonna run when the page loads pretty much. So for now, I just wanna see what happens. So let's just push this over. All right, so I'm gonna set up the watch flag so it keeps pushing them to our project. So if I go back right now and take a look what happened, if I refresh this, I should have that HTML file pretty much and this. So let's just go ahead and deploy a web app so we can have a link. And I'll just open the latest code. So there it is, it's in here, I can draw in it, so. Why don't we just put this in some sort of div? And maybe since we're using bootstrap, let's also just add a container class around this whole thing and put this in a div. So this one will just do a panel class from Bootstrap. So I'm gonna save this. Okay, so now we have, there it is, it's over here now. The panel class didn't go very well there. Let me go check the class for this and see what it's called now. I guess they now do a border or something. Yeah. Okay, so we'll call this border. I'm gonna save this again. Let's go check out what this looks like. We have something, but it still goes up to here. It doesn't resize to the screen. So we'll have to check the sizing thing. So far, this is good. I wanna add something that clears whatever we do here in the signature box. So we'll add a couple of buttons. So 
So for this clear, let's add an ID. And we need to run a function when we click on that. So we'll set that up. So the ID was this. So basically when we click on that clear button, we want to run this function. Now that function is supposed to just clear the signature. So for that, let's just move this as a global. and remove the var from here. And then later we should be able to take that canvas and we have to go find what it was called. Well, I guess that's pretty simple, just clear. And not the canvas actually, we need to get the signature pad. So I have to fix that. So this is incorrect. Let's put this back and put this as a global. Remove the var. And then we're gonna take that signature pad and we're gonna clear that. Okay, let's go check if this works. And it clears, good. Okay, so that's that. Now let's try to send this to the back end. So apparently we need to send this somehow and convert it to a picture, which will be the trickiest part out of this whole thing. So let's take a look. Uh, apparently there is the signature to data URL. Save as PNG, JPEG, SVG. So I think that's the method no matter what. So when we try to send this to the back end or wherever we're sending this, let's do a function. Let me just paste it here for a second from the docs. And let's just run this when we click on that other button. I think I gave it an ID send, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So when we click on it, we're gonna run this send to drive. Now I want to just console log this to see what this looks like. So now save this, let's go check this out. Now let's open the console, clear all this stuff. Let's click send and see what happens. Okay, so base64 encoded PNG file apparently. Uh, I think that's the format and maybe this is the data. I don't know. Let's go check their docs, but that's what it looks like. Uh, here's an example in Ruby. They take this, they split it by the comma, get the second thing. And base decode. Okay, yeah, exactly. So everything after the comma is basically the data itself. So we should be just sending this to the back end pretty much at this point. So let's go to our back end and create a function to get this information.
and that is going to accept that string, whatever that is. We'll call it something like this. And we'll take that and split it by the comma and get the second part after the comma. Since this is gonna split to an array with two elements, we're just gonna get the second one, which is what we pretty much need. So let's just call it data, I guess. So now that I have the data, I have to, what was it, base64? Yeah, we have to base64 decode this and I think we have a function for that in utilities. See, base64 decode. I don't know if we have to use the web save or not. I think we might. Let's try that and see what happens. And the string. So the string is going to be that data. And that should return. What does it return? From the looks of it, it returns an array. I'm gonna have to go check their docs on this. So here's our app scripts utilities base 64 decode. So it returns bytes. And then we have to create a blob out of it. All right, makes sense. So let's do that. So let's take that utilities and do that new blob. And this is gonna accept data number as array, data number as array, data string. Well, I suppose the number as array refers to bytes. We'll try that and see what happens. So we'll just push this in here and then we'll get it as a picture. Okay, autocomplete doesn't seem to work for this. Maybe I misspelled something. PNG it should be, so. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. All right, we'll just type the way it's supposed to be. Let's just set some name for this. And that should now be hopefully a picture. Again, this is all assumptions that all the stuff I did is actually accurate. So signature as picture. Now we need to take that and put it in our drive. So let me get some folder ID. This one should be good. And we're gonna create a file in here and pass our blob. I'm going to assume that's good. Now let's try to run this function in our front end to see if that works. So right here, we're gonna run our backend function. And we're going to send that image data to that. So I'm just going to save this. Let's see what happens. Let's go open our web app, reload this thing. Uh oh, so something we didn't allow here. Let's refresh and go back and run something here so it does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that should set all the permissions. Let's go back and reload this. 
Alright, let's have this open. Now let's try to put something in here and click send. Exception, could not decode string. Okay, so not good news. So let's go back and check. This, is it possible that we have to use the regular decode like this one? So let's save this. Gonna go back and reload and try this again. Exception, blob object must have non-null content type for this operation. All right, so the decoding apparently now worked. Let me try to log this out and see what happens. Save that and we're going to try to go back and run this, see what happens here. So no errors, which is not surprising. But let's go back and check our transcripts. It does seem to be an array of numbers. So let's take this part off for now. This should be the blob. So maybe we should just pass this blob here and then we'll set the name. Let's just try this and see what happens. I have a bad feeling about this, but let's just test it. must have non-null name for this operation. So I suppose we have to do the name here then. Okay, so no complaints this time. Now let's see what happened. Is it actually a picture or some weird stuff? So that actually worked. So we have our signature file. Cool. Here we are now. I want to change the size of this if possible. So what happens if we actually set the size? Okay, so that's fine. I think I can live with that. But we probably want to add the line on the canvas, not on this thing. So we can know how far this is supposed to go. So let's do that. I'm going to make this actually smaller while I'm doing that. And let's just try to add a class to this and see what happens. We know where we're supposed to do the signature. We can clear. Okay, let's hit send and go check out our Google Drive. So far, nothing. Oh, I forgot I gave it the same name. There it is. That's my new signature. This actually works. We just don't want this console log anymore.
And that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.